In this tutorial, we will examine the channel EQ, which we have chosen FIR configuration for system filters. Equalizers based on IIR filters alter the signal phase behavior with significant effects on audio quality. Often the signal heavily equalized with IIR filters is characterized by an unclear stereo image and lack of transients definition. FIR equalizer does not alter phase, allowing more precise and detailed corrections without conditioning the audio quality. In FIR mode, we have eight poles combined with two optional IIR poles. The IIR poles can be used in parametric or notch mode on the entire frequency spectrum. I can move the poles in the graph with the mouse or set the values with the three cursors also typing the values with the keyboard. I can link the left and right channels or act on them independently. If we link the channel, the values of the right channel are copied to the left one. Let's start activating multi-SE to select tweeters, mids, and woofers belonging to the three-way system in the front. We note that unlike the IIR mode, the response curve does not show holes because the use of FIR crossover allows to keep electrical phase constant. I also add the subwoofer which does not change the curve. In an intuitive way, I can move the parametric poles graphically with the mouse, adding notch poles to correct responses highlighted by the RTA analysis tool. I can equalize the subwoofer channel with the IIR poles independently. I can use all pass type poles activating the IIR on check. All pass poles are useful in the crossing frequencies points to compensate non-linearities produced by different types of speakers of the emission front. This is particularly true when the speakers are installed at a significant distance from one another. All pass poles are automatically positioned in the intersections and have different colors for the first and second order. The presence of the line in the graph shows that the filter is active. Clearly, I can also place an all-pass pole at the lower intersection. Sum mode shows the total electrical response of the emissions front that we can compare with the acoustic response measured with a professional RTA tool. With the EQ bypass function, I can exclude the equalization intervention and make real-time comparisons with the raw signal. The highlighted brown curve shows the speaker emission area that we have selected. By clicking on mid-range in the left panel, I activate the mids emission area and the same by clicking on woofers. The correlation of the poles for the same emission front allows to maximize the acoustic result when we intervene between two adjacent poles placed on different channels. I also have a shelving pole available at the top of the spectrum. Using the DEL command, I can reset any selected pole. Once the equalization of an emission front has been completed, it is recommended to save the current configuration and proceed with the configuration of another emission front. I can copy the configuration saved in memory A to memory B to optimize it without compromising the basic settings. Once the channel equalization is over, I can move on to main EQ acting on all output channels. The total frequency response is modeled according to the listening taste and preferred music genre. I can deactivate main EQ in real time. Finally, we can choose between slow or fast roll-off PCM filter response, according to personal tastes. Since this function acts only on processor DAC, it is only available when we use the Virtuoso analog outputs, while it disappears if we use the AD link digital link bus in a full DAHD chain. At the end of the EQ tuning, it is always advisable to save the setup and finalize it in the processor memory in order not to lose the settings.